a baby. <laughs> Ladies and gentle bitches, we are gathered here today in the church of my two brain cells. Yes, they are diminishing. My brain cells are diminishing. I'll be lucky if we finish this album with, with one, dude. Honestly. Today, we are listening to the brand new album from Andrew Hosier. Burn. Unreal. Unearth. And let me tell you, I just had a fantastic weekend up in Nashville. I just hung out with my boys, Adam, Bob, and, Adam, Bob, and, Zach, and Adam, Bobby, and Zach. It was a blast, okay? To say the least. I have a video up on the second channel. If you guys want to go check that out for the whole weekend. I was up in the mountains. I really felt like I bonded with nature. The birds singing, cicadas, cicada ain't no AC. It was hot as fuck. But God damn it. I connected people. And it got me thinking, if I can connect like this with nature, I've got to be able to connect to the music that it inspires. And I feel like that's what Hosier is all about, baby. I'm excited to dive into this album. It's my first Hosier album. I've never listened to a Hosier album before. Dude, as y'all know, man, I, I try to make sense of some of these songs, these lyrics. We like to go over lyrics a lot. Sometimes I'm on the mark. Sometimes it's flying over my head. I just feel like Hosier is that guy that just, he writes about the Iliad and the Odyssey. I'm still on Catcher in the Rye. I want to Hello? Check? Check one, two? What the fuck was that? Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come. Clocking in at 16 songs. An hour and two minutes. Over an hour. We have Unreal Unearth. We have a slew of writers and a slew of producers as well. Beckon Chakra, Craig Balmoris Hosier, Jeff Giddy, Jennifer DeSilvio, Marius Fender, Pete G, Sarah May, Sean Cook, Shergu Gurman, and Tyler Melbenbacher. Ooh, okay. You know what this is reading a lot like? It's like the cult leaders, each having their own small segment of the writing and the production and I see a lot of these writers are also in the producer category as well so that that makes me feel like he's definitely working with people who are uh, well versed in many different kinds of songwriting skills so let's get into it dude the first track is actually a first part of a two-parter and it is titled Deselby part one I do not know what Deselby is but we will find out okay I was gonna say there was gonna be acoustic for sure Me to sleep. You take in the blackness of air. Blackness? The lakes of the darkness so deep. Oh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lean back and hope for the best. God at the start couldn't bear. What is that? Sit and see. It's like someone trying to contact you with Morse code. With in our hotel with all mirroring gone from the world. It's a lot of suspension. Ooh. Ooh, the electronics. It's still the mind. Rejecting this new empty space. Oh, I like him going into this major and going it with in and out. Or So could I be to God? Oh my God, is he? Is Why he ascended? He He's ascended? What? Is what? what is he? Is this? This is Is this Elvish? It's Casting a fucking spell on me. I'm transforming. He's changing me into a a wolf. Oh, transition. What's your oh, of course, part two. Part two. What you live in. 
Oh, whoa, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, uh. The last part of, of that song was, that, uh, I, I felt like I was transported to like Game of Thrones or, 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 or some kind of mystical land. I felt like I was isekai you know, like literally truck coon came, boom, got my ass. I was transported. First of all, will you just look at this? Every single thing has a, has a, an analysis. A description and each one on the side is like pretty like decently long too it says here the song references at several points that the work of de selby a fictitious philosopher from the book of the third policeman by flan o'brien human existence being a hallucination containing in itself a secondary hallucinations of day and night the latter an insanitary condition of the atmosphere due to the i'm tapped it's a masterpiece whatever whatever you want to call it sure it sounds really pretty it feels cinematic going into it and especially when he starts spitting on that on that bufilius sorana acta gas nos na does it translate it just kind of y'all really want to see it's it's it's, it's this i'm just gonna enjoy the music okay i'll let the comment section explain the emotions that i feel during each song okay how does that sound? You can just read the read the translation. Yeah, well, here's the thing, George. The translation is gonna cause this video to be an hour and a half longer than it needs to be. I'm I might not even connect to it after I read these explanations, because that's what it's feeling like. It's, I'm just like, it says here, the lyrics explore darkness in the context of the connection to self, to other, to a sense of time and space. According to Hosier in a letter to his fans, he stated that DeSelby 2 took its place in the opening of the album together with its prequel seemed as a fitting addition to advance into the circles of hell that follow. Okay, we're diving into the circles of hell. Is that, what's, is that what is happening? Is it gonna be a Dante's Inferno kind of thing? Y'all will be acting like my spark notes, okay? Can I cheat off of you guys on this one, please? Let's Listen to the cell beat. I want to hear these instruments. What you giving? What you living? That guitar groove is kind of hard to catch. I need a I need a click. Wait, there it is. Ooh. Wait a minute. Okay, there we go. There are some resolving chords. Ooh. Oh, and the vocals. Belting. Kill him. didn't tell me he gets bluesy like this dude good lord oh my gosh seriously i've only really listened to like take me to church and even then i feel like my memory is even like kind of foggy on how that whole song went but dude this is super bluesy this is like in like straight up band funk fucking guitar Ooh. and that vocoder's coming in He gets into this back and forth with that vocoder and it's so funky. Oh, I gotta groove a little bit. Just the vocoder. Oh my god, that's epic as fuck! Oh my god! a runner he is a track star i want to run so far i'd beat the morning he is saying he is so fast he would outrun the sun yeah that's so fucking fun dude 
<laughs> that like main lead melody is just exactly on like the jumps in the pentatonic scale. Just makes you feel like he's just like edging towards this uh, next note in the chain and then he slides back into it. Oh, it's super funky. Let me look at these lyrics. What you're given, what you live in, darling, it finds a way to live in you. And your heart, love, as such darkness, I feel it in the corners of the room. Okay, so we're getting like love and light and then darkness and corners and it's a lot of contrast it feels like. If I was any closer, after the gloom, I could only lose me, I wanna lose. If I fade away, let me fade away, I fade away with you. Pre-chorus, want to be when you fall on me like every night every time falling on you every night. And I want to be so far from sight and mind. Oh, he wants to get rid of all the sense senses. He wants to kill the lights. Then in the course, I want to run against the world that's turning. I move so fast that I'd outspace the dawn. Sounds so epic. I want to be gone. Wow. Okay, to me, this is what it's going to be about to me, okay? It's about superheroes. This guy, DeSelby, clearly wants to achieve the impossible. I'd run so fast, I'd beat the mornings. Before dawn come, I'd block the sun. If you want it done, I can do it. It reads a lot like him just like wanting to achieve. What did y'all say? Yearning? He's yearning his heart out. Okay, let's get into the next one, dude. I, I want to see where the story goes, dude. I'm kind of kind of hooked to me. The next song is titled First Time. <laughs> There's that pentatonic again, dude. Ooh. Remember once I told you about how before I heard it from your mouth, my name would always hit my ears as such an awful sound. And the soul, if that's what you call it, uneasy ally of the body, it felt nameless as a river undiscovered underground. First time that you kiss me, I drank dry the river leafy. Leafy would have been softer on my stomach all the same. God, his voice is so powerful. Spoke some quick new music that went so far to soothe the soul as it was and never shall be. On earth without a name. On earth! The Some part of me. He said it! Just a simple two-line chorus. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is, oh, this is just right in that wholesome pocket of energy, bro. I love that. I also love that the chorus, he just kept it really simple with the two-part chorus. Remember once I told you about how I heard it but from your mouth, my name would always hit my ears in such an awful sound. He didn't like the sound of his own name before he met this person, this lover, the soul, if that's what you call it, uneasy ally of the body, it felt nameless as a river. He didn't even have a name for his own soul. He didn't even know nothing. He was as lost as a nameless river, undiscovered underground. Where the fuck are these underground rivers? That sounds insane. The first time you kissed me is what the pre-chorus starts with. Boom! Ah! Smooches! Emotion. I love that. I drank dry the river leaves. Holy shit. He was so thirsty. The Liffy would have been softer on my tummy all the same. I guess the Lifty was another river he was considering swallowing, I would go for probably an Evian over a deer park. But you spoke some quick new music that went so far to soothe this soul as it was and ever shall be unearthed without a name. Some part of me must have died the first time you called me baby. I, that's what I feel like is like the best part about it is that all of this, all of the, the verse and the pre about, you know, kind of roping you in with this like super artistic pen work is getting boiled down to what the true essence of the song feels like in the chorus with verbiage that is easily digestible. That is very impressive as a songwriter. I did not know that he was going to rise like this. This is the definition of a pen game. Wow, let's keep listening. Sensing only now it's dying, drying out and drowning blindly, blooming forth in every oh. color. In the moments it has left to share this space oh. with simple living. Dude, every time I think he's at the peak of his, his vocals, he just goes up one more time, dude. That's crazy. Oh my god. What a vocalist. He just keeps climbing those stairs. <laughs> This little falsetto moment is so nice too. There's like little subtle electronic flutters in the back alongside these really, really warm strings. 
was the last time someone oh, there's that accent of me most of day the final time you called me baby oh the final time But some part of me came oh. the final time you oh and this little noodles in the left ear he really does make you go on a journey, doesn't he? Oh, man. The last time, it was heard out loud. This whole time, I feel like he's talking about his soul, like the name of his soul. I feel like he's, he feels like some, like, larger entity that was just, like, found by this person. And he was just lost stumbling, and then finally he meets this person. And it's like a Beauty and the Beast, like, experience. Like, he sheds all of his, like, little woodland out outsides, and he's, like, this, like, warm, handsome, long-haired Irish man. And it's, like... He's just talking about like how this person has changed his soul deeper than anything that he could have ever, ever thought would be happening. Yeah, he says, the last time I heard it out loud, the perfect genius of our hands and mouths were shocked to resignation as the arguing declined. When I was young, I used to guess, are there limits to any emptiness? When was the last time? Now he's just left with his emptiness. The last time he thought about emptiness that he's feeling right now was when he was younger. And then ending the, the song with the part of me died. Oh man, oh dude. And in verse two, he's talking about how these days he feels as he, like he owes his life to this person. He feels like his life was like dedicated to, to the things that happened in his past, like his mother's passing potentially. That's what I get from this. He's actually insane for this. Next song, Francesca. Did we listen to this one? I don't know. Do you think I'd give up? <gasps> Francesca was her. This might have shook a love from me. Oh, he's not giving up. The brink. He's not he's not giving up. How could you think? Darling, night scares so easily. Woo. He's strong. There's not one thing that I would change. Oh, that tension. My life oh. Was a Since I was born. Ooh. How could I feel any hurricane? If someone asked me at the end, I tell them put me back in it. Fuck the ocean, the ocean of sounds that chorus is. Holy fuck! How it just rips open like he's just ripping out to sea on this vessel. You know the ship, straight up One Piece reference. I know you see it. I know you see it. I know you see oh it. Oh my god, that's fucking epic as fuck. Put me back in. Put me back in, coach. I don't even know what this man has gone through, but it feels like it's a lot. So having him open up this huge chorus and say, "Put me back in." Like hopeful, you know? He starts the progression really minor, but as he keeps on pushing towards this image of getting her back, it resolves into a major. That is really beautiful. No, I know my heart's brave. I tell him, put me back in it. Yeah, I would do it God, resolving into that huge major? Holy shit, that is insane. Oh yeah, this is gonna go crazy live.
Wow. Enormous wave of music just ending that entire song with all of his reverbed out vocals, giving you a heavenly like experience to end on the lyrics. Heaven is not fit to house a love like you and I. Not even the clouds. God damn it. I'm rooting for him. I am rooting for this man. He's gonna get her back. He's going to achieve this goal, dude. Are we into this shit yet? Are we like into the circle of hell? How far does he have to go for her? What is he gonna have to sacrifice? That's what I wanna know. Oh, oh my God. So many questions, so many more songs. We must go. Continuing to I carry on. Parentheses, a carrion. Is this a little, maybe a little a reference to the old, the old wax wings? Potentially Icarus? I carry on. Yes, you do, brother. Yes, you do. We are there with you. Um, I'm your Nakama. Ooh. Oh, scary. What? What's a what? What's a squall? Just one question. What's a? I feel lighter than I have in so much time. I've crossed the borderline of weightless. One deep breath out. That's good. That's a good thing. I've reached a rarer height now that I can confirm. This motherfucker said, I've reached a rarer height than I can, n that I, I've reached a rarer height now that I can confirm all our weight is just a burden offered to us by the world. A rarer height? This motherfucker said, I've reached a rarer height. Like he is not already seven feet tall. What? No more height for you, okay? This isn't One Piece. Stop, come back down. I'm getting shin implants. And how could I fall? You, do, does he burn now? By every word you say to me. Dude, super soft vocals. I feel like he's just hugging me. Once I wondered what was holding up the ground. But I can see that all along love, it was you all the way down. Damn, she's holding up the ground. Leave it now. Oh. I am skybound. If you need to, darling, lean your weight to me. He's asking to come closer to him. Away. But if we fall, I only pray. Don't fall away from me. Oh. I do not have wings, love. I never. Wait, how are you? How is he flying if he doesn't have any wings? Shit, bro. Oh, this is really beautiful though, man. Dude, oh. all of the imagery talking about how he feels like he's the sky and she's like the earth. She's even like below the earth holding up the earth. And there's like that kind of distance between them. Like they're as different as earth and sky. And he's just, even though he feels weightless and he feels like even if he hits a squall or the wind changes, you know, to, he wants to to fall and 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 fall into to her. But the way he's using fall, like fall in love, I feel like he's also using as a way of like saying like to fall away from each other because as the sky, you can also fall into space. And he hopes that if he does fall, he hopes he falls into earth, her and not space away. Oh my God. Yeah, this is cool. This is pretty cool, man. This is pretty cool. I definitely get the whole like planetary Greek God vibe from this. He even mentions he'll be, uh, let me be your own. I carry on, carry on. Okay, what does this mean? Genius. Don't let me down. It says right here, Icarion is a reference to Icarus. Okay, yo, I was right. Hell yeah. Soaring too high for safety, like Icarus, adventurous in flight, Carrion is dead. Putrefying flesh. Ew. Although Hosier hints to love saving Icarus, at the end, Icarus still falls to his death. Oh, fuck. But never stops loving the person the song is about. Oh my god. God. Oh, dude, this really is the entire story of Icarus, bro. Wow. Put in the sense of like having a lover and relating them to the earth below and like safety. That's, oh, that's crazy. Wow. As he is carry on, we must carry on as well. Into, um, uh, eat your young. Eat your young. Okay. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't look promising for our boy. Did someone call Ethel Kane? Ooh. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the chords. Wait, I might be eating. 
Ooh, the vocals. Oh, this is like the classic. The, the speed of these chords is hitting. I'm starving, Let me put my Ooh. lips to something. Let me wrap my teeth around the world. Oh, he wants to eat the world now? Ooh. I want to smell the dinner cooking. I want to feel the edges start to burn. Oh, what are we cooking? A casserole? You can't buy this fineness? Oh, excuse moi. Oh my god, let me see the heat get to you. Let me watch the dressing start to peel. We can celebrate the good that we done. Oh, he's evil now. He's straight up cannibalizing these bitches. Oh my god, that's so addicting. Dude, it's just one of those progressions that you just don't want to stop. Oh. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, yes. Ooh, yes. Come on, string assemblement. Ooh, high keys. Wow. Dude, are we in a Christopher Nolan movie? Bro, this is cinematic. shouldn't be surprised it's a hosier <laughs> who else is doing shit like this that's what i want to know like who else is who is like burying themselves in in dirt you know i mean that's dedication baby he's he's got like dirt inside his teeth my god but dude honestly though this also makes your teeth look so fucking white that could be anthony fantano underneath there yeah stellar song dude stellar song definitely getting the uh the underlying like maybe this is definitely about something happening in our real world, talking about uh, skinning the children for a war drum, put in front of the table, selling bombs and guns. It's quicker, quicker and easier to eat your young. Ooh. That's good piss. Moving into the next tune. It is titled Damage Gets Done, featuring Brandy Carlisle. Yo, what? Okay. Hell yeah, dude. Brandy mother freaking Carlisle. What's the relation? Oh. Okay. Whoa. This is. Wait, this is different. This is different. I love the bass movement. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's kind of a bop. It's kind of that, it's, it's edging towards a little bit more traditional pop. Oh! Oh, that's a bar. Oh, I love the harmonies they're doing. Oh, wow. Oh, he's teasing at so much. Oh. Fuck me up. I didn't know Hosier could ride this wave, too. Oh, my God. This is way more straight up like pop, bro. The teasing so much with that little seventh note in there. But then reaching that octave for the chorus. Oh, that's nice. 
Christ. Okay, Brandy. So this is so tight. I want a whole album like this. I feel like it's dragging on us just a little bit. Could have ended. Could have ended by now. But yeah, man, I got. I had to pull out the guitar because I just had to see what key it was in. It's in G major. If it, it feels fantastic in G. Something I, I feel like is just like such a oddball choice that pay off. That pays off really, really well. That's how specifically Hosier comes in with his harmonies on this pre, and he's teasing this seventh man. Like in in traditional pop Western music, there's eight keys in a major scale. Actually, technically seven keys, but one is an octave. One and eight are an octave. But he's just like hanging on to that seventh, and it's causing so much tension that when it results or when you want it to resolve, he actually ends up going past it and coming back down to it. So it's almost like he's attacking the melody and he's attacking that dominant one note, that solid G from both sides. And it's just, it's it's kind of emitting a powerful musical vacuum. Both of them sound phenomenal on that track. I am obsessed with that vibe. I would like an entire album of that on my desk next year. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next one. Who we are. Tell me, Hosier. May I? Andrew. I know he's got a sense of humor. I know he's a funny, goofy, silly guy deep down, we probably get along. Who are we? Who we are? Besties. You only feel it when it's lost. Getting through still has a cause. Oh, wow, that piano. It's like a little out of tune. It slips through your fingers, love. Oh. From oh, the production is much different. What I Powerful, bro. Another one of these piano progressions that kind of has this like descending chromatic melody that just feels like you feel like you know where you're going, but you actually don't. You're actually just not as far as you think you are. The journey is still continuing. Oh. God. We're born at night. So much to the lives. It's is just carving through the dark to get so far. The hardest part is who we are. Yeah, that is the hardest part. Darling, we I love that song. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fuck, what in the shit? It's a D5. Yeah, he just hit a D5. <laughs> and he's still going! This man is a mythical animal. What are you? Andrew? What kind of creature? My god. Only feel it when it's lost. Getting through 
still has its cost Quietly It slips through your fingers Love falling from you Drop by drop I would love to see how he finishes songs. I, I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't all, always think about because there's so many layers, there's so many different expressions of emotion that I feel like he could touch on because he, it feels like these songs are just in a world of their own. That I, I wonder how he, I wonder how he goes. All right, that's it. That's enough. I would love to know that. What is after this song? Son of Nyx. Who's Nick? Nick is not green. <laughs> Son of Nick. Nyx is the Greek goddess of darkness. Oh man, we're into this now. Still on these minor brooding chords. Oh shit. Wait a minute, this is called the son of Nyx? So it's not Nyx, it's not the... It's her son. Ooh. Oh, is it just instrumental too? This is a nice reprieve. I like this. Ooh. Electronic to organic? Oh my god. Ooh, I love that vocal just coming in. I'm definitely tripping. Definitely tripping. Dude, I love the glitching in here. It kind of makes me want to hear him on some hyper pop. That was fire. Yeah, wow. A uh, beautiful little little like midway point for the album because that was like about halfway. Nine nine tracks. The song represents Dante's first steps towards the light on his journey through hell. In an interview with the EU, Posey revealed that although the song is called is also about Nyx, the Greek goddess of night, and her son Sharon, okay, who ferries newly deceased souls across the river Styx and a Charon, it is much more about personal meaning for him and is a tribute to the late father of Hosier's close friend and bass player, Alex Ryan. Uh, he, Alex Ryan, sent me a voice memo with just him sitting at the piano playing this beautiful piece. What you're hearing is literally just the voice memo. Wow. Oh, wait a minute. Ryan sent the note shortly after his father's death. Alex's father's name was Nick. Wow. So he must have just laid some of those like vocals on top of it and, and kind of produced it out from there. That is uh, that is an unbelievably heavy performance to really think about. Wow. The emotions you have as a musician after your father's death, the, after your father's death, the first one of probably one of the first times your fingers touch the keys again. What are you going to play? So cool that he ties it into the narrative as well. Ugh. That's just really impressive, dude. Let's get into the next one. All things end. Ugh, great. More sadness. A two-tongue weight around my chest feels like... Ooh, okay. A little... It just dropped a 20 star Oh, I love the three chords. Oh, that's so r and was anyone to ever get to Ooh. this lake. Wait a minute! With their hearts still in they didn't do it right. Oh, I might. Oh, I might have to. Come on. Last time I felt you weighed on my chest. You said we didn't get it right. But love we did. Oh, he omitted that clap one time. And we will again. Oh, come on. Moving on in time, taking more. God, oh, we shut up. A two-tone weight on my chest, bro. Feels like it dropped 20 stories height. If there was anyone to ever get through this life with the heart still intact, they didn't do it 
right. Oh my God. That's a damn bar, dude. Bar. Holy shit. The last time I felt your weight on my chest, relating that two ton weight as the weight of somebody else, we didn't get it right, but love, we did our best. Echoing back into the front of the album, like we heard with the other tracks, into the pre-course, moving on in time, taking more from everything that ends. And he's finally moving on. In the chorus, and all things end. All that we intend scrawled in sand, slipping through our hands like sand. The pen game, insane. Bop, banger, dinger, Greenheart Club, welcome, dude. Oh my god. This is like, it's crazy because I feel like we've also, like, maybe heard a, a little bit of, like, this feeling from him before on this record? What was the other song? Maybe Who We Are kind of gets gets onto this a little bit. But man, dude. Oh. Hearing these lyrics after we read the description of Son of Nyx. <sighs> dude. I have never known a silence like the one fallen here. Never watch the future darken in a single tear. I know we want this to go easy by being someone's fault, but we've gone on long enough to know this isn't what we want, and this isn't always bad. Oh, the growth. Emotional growth. Jeez. I love it. The next song is To Someone From A Warm Climate. The warming of the bed You'd shake for minutes there And move your leg this is what I look like the host Wrap here. the blanket over you and keep your head within. There are some things that no one teaches you, Lord. No one's teaching me, brother. They come natural as a dream. You didn't know that you were in. Oh, I love these chords. And darling, I'm a dreaming. Oh, that minor four. Happened easy, darling. It's natural as another leg around you in the bed. And I wish I could see that the river of my arms had found the ocean. Oh my, the river of my arms? He has arm rivers. I wish I could see the cold lake of water of my heart. Beautiful progression. Natural as another leg around you in the bed frame. I think it's referencing like being cuddled up in bed, but then, but then like bed frame. It's a very specific thing. Bed frames also have legs that hold them up. So like what? Like I don't, it's very cute. It's a really lovely song. I really love it. Skure, as described by Hozier, is an Irish word for something that has been made cold by water. Okay, interesting. Still kind of don't know what it's about. Really like the river arms line. My, the river of my arms? He has arms. Arm rivers. That's fucking fire. I mean water. Yeah, I just read the I just read the description from the first lyric right here, and it says there's a dual meaning about warming your bed with the body of another, which he's mentioned before in another song, and with taking the legs shaking when the throne of passion occurs. Oh god. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a lot of other things in the bed, apparently. I will leave that one to the comment section. That was nice, though. I like it. Let's move into Butchered Tongues. We're back on the cannibalistic side of things. Cool. What you hungry for? Tongues just butchered them. Mm -hmm. As a child, it was the place name. Singing at me is the first thing. How the mouth must be employed. In every corner of itself Mouths employed? To say Apalachicola Or Hushpikina like Guibara I've been to Apalachicola But not the other two I promise softly song of 
live somewhere else They are buried without scalp In the shattered bedrock of our home oh, man. You may never know your fortune Until the distance has been shown Between what is lost forever And what can still be known So far from home to have a stranger Call you darling And have your guarded heart be lifted They like could sail to play the hand In some town it just means home to them With no translator left to sound A butchered tone still singing here above the ground That last imagery of a butchered tongue singing here above the ground. I never really pictured tongues singing. I feel like when you refer to like tongues in any kind of like, you know, sense, you're talking about like maybe like lies or like secrets, you know? Did somebody say that this was about colonizing? He does men mention in the song that certain things hit his foreign ear uh, a little weird. Yeah, oh, tongues with languages. That makes sense. Dude, how cool. It feels really homely with the, with the kind of like production around it and all like the kind of like very nice uh, positively resolving you know crescendos and whatnot it's about ireland being colonized dude i gotta get back to the home country dude i gotta get I gotta get my potato on i went once when i was younger with my family and i kissed the blarney stone and I, it created the gift of gab as they say that's the I, that's as much as my irish heritage that i know other than my last name it used to be oh hey it's kind of cool or oh hey actually it was it was actually oh hey uh lovely tune let's get into the next one anything but tell me anything but what hmm Oh, some claps. It's a good energy. Come here to me, I wish I was a mayfly on the river tape. I'd fit all my joys and my pleasures in one perfect day. I wish I was a sunlight. Oh, I like those just little bass drum stabs. I'd settle for a shopping trolley. Ooh. Oh, I love that. And it's sad I'd swap my body for a body. Dude, what a fun little pocket to be in. I love the fusion of like the folk kind of clapping, you know, like the organic kind of percussion. And then it's that huge reverb out 80s snare just He's like honestly kind of blowing me away with the kind of like upbeat songs. I thought he was more or less like the more just like very subtle, very low-key, mysterioso kind of guy. And there's definitely, a, you know, a fair amount of that on here. But these songs, oh my god, just brighten up my damn day. Let's keep it going, man. Abstract. Psycho pomp. Okay. Sometimes it returns like rain that you slip through the washed of the world. The streets looking brand new I will not be great But I'm grateful to get through Ooh, that's a the good The feeling came late I'm still glad I met you The memory hurts But does me no harm Oh, the reverse in my pocket To keep us both warm oh, Going back with the reverse it's ice still glistening, cold wind of your nose, the earth from a distance. Did he hit a, did he hit a deer? I need to know 
now it's shining. In your arms, I'm afraid we'll always be trapped within an abstract from a moment of my life. The weeds up through the concrete, the traffic picking up speed. Oh, my love and terror balanced there between those eyes. See how it shines. Oh, man. Oh, his first memories of witnessing such a great act of kindness. Yeah, did they? Am I getting this right that they maybe he and his partner had had been driving and hit a deer and and had it die in their arms? He was a child witnessed a lady running in the street to be with an animal. One is watching an animal being hit by a car in Greystones. This happened to Hosier when he was young. Yeah, wow. In Dante's Allegory, Divine Comedy, a, a sphinx appears in the eighth circle of hell. Wow, we're deep in this bitch. God damn. Specifically in the ninth pouch known as the pouch of the sowers of discord and schematics where souls are punished by being split and wounded like down the middle God damn. in the study of religions and mythology a psychopomp is a being who guides spirits from the world of the living to the afterlife or the underworld okay its use in the title of the song is reference to the being who he describes as rushing to dying animals to comfort them oh man oh okay that's a really sweet twist on that I like when the grim reaper is like like the images of like grim reaper taking other people to the afterlife and he's like really sweet about it you know like I, I really like that I don't I don't like the scary Grim Reaper vibe I feel like that's overdone that's overplayed the Grim Reaper has the most you know compassion for all of the deceased because he gets to meet all of them let's keep on moving this next one is called unknown slash nth okay oh I like the noodling. Ooh. Oh, I like that drive getting heavier as he gets lower. That's nice. You know the distance never made a difference to me. Oh, he's playing this? I oh, hell yeah. A lake of fire. I'd have walked across the floor of the sea. Yes, Ignored yes, sir. The vastness between all that can be seen. Oh, there we believe. So I thought you were like an angel to me. Wow. Biblically accurate. Going on the is that the angel to me. Do you know I could wrap beneath the weight of the goodness love I still carry? so free. It's so carefree and childlike. Holy shalala! That was so good! God, the way he can just carry that lead vocal all the way through with very little help from harmonies, honestly. Where they do come in, it's like heavenly. But really, it's just that single vocal the entire time with that with that guitar. And I love that he's playing it too. Oh my god, dude. It's so spicy. In the bridge, do you know I could break beneath the weight of the goodness love I still carry for you? He has gone through this entire album giving us these metaphors and allegories and similes and all of these literary devices to talk about the weight that love puts on him and how much it feels like. And he's at the end of the album still saying, do you know that I could still break under how much weight? I still have so much love for you. It is, it could break me if I, if I let it. That I'd walk so far just to take the injury of finally knowing you. He would walk faster than the sun comes up over the earth to just be able to know this person. This is like a new level of like simpage in the best way possible. He just puts it so elegantly. You know, the distance never made a difference. 
difference to me. I swam a lake of fire. A lake of fire. I had walked across the floor of any sea. Ignore the vastness between all that can be seen and all that we believe. All that we can see and all we can't see and that we just believe. So I thought you were like an angel to me. Funny how true colors shine in darkness and the secrecy. He found something out that maybe he didn't like. If there were scarlet flags, red flags, they washed out in my in the mind of me. Where a blinding light shone on you every night and either side of my sleep, where you were held frozen like an angel. He hits verse one and verse two back to back before getting to the chorus. Very interesting choice. In the chorus, we get those beautiful shalalas, but we also get it ain't the being alone. It ain't, it's not the empty home. You know I'm good on my own. I'm so much of the living love is being unknown. So he's kind of saying in my mind, I've moved past it. I'm healthy. I'm good. I'm in a place where I feel like I have reconciled with all the things that I went through to be with you and nothing happened. Nothing came of it. But still there at the end of the bridge, I still got all this weight and this love for you. That's pretty heavy, man. Last track on the album, dudes. First light. Last track, but it's the first light. Is he coming out of the Dante's Inferno? Is he coming out of the circle of hell? Let's see. Oh, it's dark, it's brooding, I don't know. Oh, it's getting cinematic again. Holding us there with that melody. Your eyes open at first a thousand miles away. Woo. But turn into the silver bullet point blank ray. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> and I can scarce believe what I'm believing in. Oh, the filter. This This is huge, bro. This is like an enormous, enormous choir. on this nice major chord. Wow! Starting off the album with the put me back in and having it release, and it's kind of like acting as his dissension. Now at the end of the album, he says, I am never going back. Oh, and realizing that he hasn't lived his life. He's lived his entire life. He's lived this entire album in darkness, chasing after something that, you know, potentially he didn't even know that he wanted or, or, or if it was good for him. And now leaving the album, he's walking and taking his life in the first light. That is a beautiful message. That is like a, a, a incredible way to wrap up an album. Oh my God, that is unreal. Unreal on earth. Thanks for making it this far. If you made it this far, folks, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the entire, you know, stream on Patreon if you missed this one. I stream every Friday and Saturday and Wednesday, so. Yeah, I had to do it. I had to, I know. I know, <sighs> but I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go cover myself up with the dirt and mud and plant myself in the ground to achieve somewhat of the same growth that this man has. I'm gonna be writing an entire review for this on AOTY if you wanna hear my thoughts and opinions over there. I'll be rating it with a number as well if that's your thing. But all right, folks, as always, stay happy, healthy, and strong, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.